Hey there, it's E-Squared Photography. I'm Erin. And I'm Emily, and we are here to keep things simple and fun. Do you have a DSLR camera and maybe struggling with manual mode? Well, we get you. We were there once too. So we're here to break it up into small pieces for you to keep it extremely simple. Also, make sure to watch all the way through because at the end of the video, we talk about something that we have just for you. We promise to have you entering your next photo session feeling confident. For the best photography tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. All right, so to keep it simple, there are three parts when it comes to manual mode, and those are the three parts that you need to master. So it is ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, three parts. So ISO, ISO is the camera's sensitivity to light. So this is going to show you, depending on how dark it is out or how light it is out, you're gonna adjust your ISO to give you the brightness that you want. Okay, so when the light is all nice outside and there's good light, it's still pretty bright outside, not too dark, you're not in a dark area, you would use a low ISO. Typically, we like to use an ISO of 200 if we can, and for most of our photo sessions, we're able to do that because we do that we start our photo sessions about two hours or so before sunset. So typically we use a 200 ISO because the lighting is really good at that time. Also at a lower ISO, you're gonna see less grain and noise in your photos. Now, when it's dark somewhere where you're shooting and we shoot in natural light, but let's say you're shooting indoors somewhere and it's a dark church, you're gonna crank that ISO up. So 1600 or more possibly, it all depends on how much light you have. But you're gonna use a higher ISO when you're in a darker area where there's darker light. Um, this though is going to cause more grain in your photos. So something to keep in mind when we're bringing up these numbers like 1600 for an ISO or whatever it might be, it's going to depend on your camera body and the range of ISO that your camera body has. So it, your camera body might only go up to an 800 ISO or a 1600 ISO. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about these. So we like to shoot in natural light and usually, like I said before, shoot at a 200 ISO or possibly an ISO of 400 if it starts to get a little bit darker. Okay, so that's ISO. Now the next one is shutter speed. And shutter speed is the length of time the shutter on your camera is open. So let's dive into what that is. All right, so let's talk about what it means to have a fast shutter speed. So an example of a fast shutter speed would be something like one over 1000. So a fast shutter speed is going to allow you to have crisp images when moving. So if you're taking photos of a child that's moving around constantly and can't sit still, you will want a fast shutter speed so you can capture that movement and not have it be a giant blur. And we'll talk about that. It also, a fast shutter speed, because it's going really quick, is going to allow less light in because it's not open for a longer period of time. All right, so then on to slow shutter speed. An example of a slow shutter speed would be something like one over 10. Now that's extremely slow. You'll probably never use it if you're taking pictures of people. Anyway, this would allow for blurred images when moving. So if you wanted a blurred image of somebody moving, you would want a slow shutter speed. This also allows more light to come in so if you need more light in your photos, you could be adjusting your shutter speed possibly, as well as a few other things. So because the shutter speed is slow, it's opening and closing really slow, it has more time to let more light in. Okay, so let me explain how we choose the shutter speed we are going to use for the day. So if we are using a 50 millimeter lens, what we always do is we double what the lens length is. So if we're using a 50, we double it, and we always wanna be at at least a one over 100 at the very lowest, because otherwise we're gonna catch blur in the images with movement, okay? So one over 100 we would do with a 50 millimeter or higher if it's possible. If it's possible, we're gonna go higher. Okay, so for example, a 100 millimeter lens then we would shoot at one over 200 at the very lowest, ideally higher. 
All right, so we've talked about ISO, which was number one. We've talked about shutter speed, which was number two. And the last thing we want to talk about is aperture. So aperture is the area over which light can enter into your lens. Sometimes you'll hear aperture referred to as the f-stop. So it's the same thing. Okay, so it can vary again with cameras at what aperture or f-stop your camera can go all the way down to or all the way up to. So let's talk about a large aperture, which is what we typically like to shoot at if we can. So an example of a large aperture is an f2.8 or something low, a lower number. And what this means is the lens is more open, which is going to allow you to get more of a blurred background by using the lower f-stop. And remember, if the lens is more open and you're at a larger aperture, you're again allowing more light to come into the camera. Okay, so now let's talk about the other extreme, which would be a small aperture, which is gonna let very little light in, like you can see in this picture, not much light is gonna be able to come through that lens. So an F14 would be considered a small aperture. We shy away from that as much as we can because we like to use the um, smaller f-stop numbers so we get more of the blur. So the lens is more is less open and there will be less blur so you will see more of what is behind the subject or subjects. All right, so everybody loves that nice blur in the background of photos. Well, that doesn't necessarily just come from adjusting your f-stop. You can actually play around with the depth of field and look at it in a few different ways. So if you look at these photos of Taylor, we're gonna talk about the, so it depends on how far you are away from your subject and how far your subject is away from their background. So in both of these photos, they're actually pretty similar distance away from their background. However, in the photo on the left, we are much closer to Taylor causing more of a blur. Where is the one where she's walking on the right? We have to be pulled further away to get her full body walking so there isn't as much of a blur. So again, increasing your um, aperture is going to allow more of a blur, but if you want to really get that nice blur in the background, you wanna be close to your subject, but also pull your subject far away from the background. And then keep in mind, these two photos that you're looking at right now, they are shot with the same f-stop. So they were probably both shot with an f2.8, 2.2, somewhere in there. Uh, so there you can see that there's a quite a difference in the blur because of our distance. So let's talk about the settings we typically use when shooting with different um, numbers of subjects. So if you look here, when we have one person, like you see with Taylor, we like to shoot at an f2.8 or around there, maybe a little bit lower, but around there to get that nice blur. When we have two to four people, so typically our families, we're, we can shoot all the way down to like a 2.5 if they're all on the same plane, so we're not getting blurred from shooting um, if they're on different planes. So if they're all on the same plane, we can go lower, but we like to go anywhere from a 2.5 to a 3.5. So you can see this family here, this family of four, we probably did not shoot this at a 2.5 because they're staggered in how they're sitting. The two girls are kind of sitting out in front. Now, if their butts were all lined up in a straight line, then yes, a 2.5 would have totally worked there. And then the last one there, the group of guides, because there's so many people, we would have probably shot this at, I would say an f-stop of a five or a little bit higher. So we can really get um, everybody crisp and clear. Now, if they were all in a straight line, technically we could do a, a lower f-stop, but because there's two rows there, we're gonna shoot with a higher f-stop. So here's an example in um, the, these photos here. So these ladies here are in a straight line. We always tell them to line their toes up with each other because that allows us to shoot at a lower f-stop or a lower number, higher aperture we would call them. The guys, again, there's two lines, there's more of them. It looks like they're moving a little bit too. So that's where you would have to possibly adjust your shutter speed. So thinking about all of those pieces, 
but because they aren't in a straight line, that means that our aperture number needs to be higher, or our f-stop needs to be higher, aperture is smaller. All right, so please comment down below with which of these three you ha are having the hardest time with and why, so we can understand what your issues are. Okay, so we want to recap and explain exactly what we do when we go out to a typical photo session. So the very first step is we turn on our camera. Yeah! Woo! We got that. Sometimes we remember that. Sometimes we forget to take our lens cap off. Um, but anyway, no, for real. So the first step we take is we set our ISO depending on the lighting that's going on. Again, typically 200, maybe 400. The next thing we always do is set our aperture. So we think about, okay, we're working this with this one senior. We're gonna set our aperture at maybe a 2.2 or a 2.8, or maybe we're working with a couple, we'll increase it maybe just a little bit, or a family, we'll increase it a little bit more, and so forth. The next thing that we do then is we adjust our shutter speed. And we're always adjusting our shutter speed using the meter. But remember, the one rule that we always follow, follow, no matter what, is we double our lens length. So if we're using a 50 millimeter, our shutter speed at the absolute lowest will be a 1 over 100. But most of the time, it's going to be higher than that um, to give more... Um, to allow for more movement with our clients as we take photos of them. And one other thing that I wanna add in too, let's say you set your ISO, you set your aperture, and your shutter speed has to be like one over 30 in order to get the image to look um, and look the, the correct brightness and exposure that you want. If that's the case, then you need to revisit ISO or your aperture in order to allow more light to come in because your shutter speed cannot be that low unless you want that blurred image. Okay, so now that you have learned a little bit more about what aperture shutter speed and ISO are, we understand that you will need practice in order to perfect this process and feel confident. So that's why we've created something just for you. So we have created a camera setting sheet as well as some practice worksheets that will force you to get outside and go practice in manual mode because we cannot tell you enough how many times we had to practice to get this right. But we've tried to break it down in the worksheet to really have you think about the different pieces and adjust and adjust and adjust until you get the image that you want and then you have record of it on your worksheet. As well as we have provided an answer key for you as well. You can download this free guide in the comments below. All right, tell us one other thing that you're really struggling with in manual mode, other than the things maybe that we mentioned, and comment below on that. All right, make sure to download your free cheat sheet below in the comments. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and share with a friend so we know to make future videos just like this. Okay, so make sure to check out our next videos for help with photography, and we will see you next time.